the bit that we were particularly looking at in this study was how did social media and disordered eating relate to each other? And what we found was a really quite a strong link between um, having a social media account and having higher levels of disordered eating thinking or behaviours. So the more time girls spent on Snapchat, the higher their level of, of disordered, disordered thinking or behaviours. Um, the more accounts that both girls or boys had, the higher their level of disordered um, thinking or behaviours. And just a range of other indicators there. And this research, it's been published and it actually attracted a lot of media attention. There are about 40 different newspaper stories on this study from around the world. Um, there was, it was on uh, TV news here in Adelaide and around Australia. Uh, I did a number of radio interviews about it because it was really the first time that the relationship between disordered eating and social media use had been looked at with such young people. Normally it's just been looked at with adults and also focusing more on, on body image rather than actual disordered eating behaviours. So it attracted a lot of interest. And as we get further into the um, um, analyses from that, that Rotary School project, we'll also be able to look at if there is a longitudinal relationship. And that means in that study, we follow people over 12 months and we want to see if they started using social media around the start of that study, does their risk of disordered eating grow as the study goes on um, related to their social media use? So I really think we're, we're still going to get a number of quite exciting and um, um, very interesting uh, publications out of that study and likely to attract further attention to it.